Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Beta FEV 65X Micro Brushless Whoop. In this video I'm going to go over its features, set it up and then test it both indoors and outdoors. In addition, in the next couple of days I'm also going to review the Mobula 7 and the Emacs Tiny Hawk. So I'm going to review each quadcopter individually and then after that I'm going to post a video that is going to compare between all the models. The Beta 65X is available in two versions. You can get a plug and play version which doesn't come with any receiver and also according to the description it doesn't come with any batteries so I don't see any reason to get it since it costs only $10 less than the Bun Fly version. The Bun Fly version comes with either an FR Sky, DSMX, Fly Sky or Futaba receivers and the FR Sky version is available either with an FCC or an LBT compatible receivers and as you can see I've got the FR Sky FCC version. Inside the box we can find the Beta FEV 65X quadcopter, two 300mAh 1S LIHB batteries which are going to be connected in serial, a spare canopy and one set of spare propellers. And by the way, as you can see, it doesn't come with any charger so you'll need to get it separately. Under the hood we can find the Beta FEV Z02 all-in-one camera. It is based on a CMOS camera that is connected to a 48 channels VTX which has a selectable output rank of 25 and 200 milliwatts and supports smart audio. The antenna is soldered to the VTX, so if you'd like to change it, you will need to desolder this antenna and either replace it with a connector or with a new antenna. And the camera is mounted to the quadcopter using this flexible mount, which is not going to break. The angle of the camera is fixed to 35 degrees, and if you'd like to change it, you will need to replace this mount, so you can either buy a 25 degrees mount or you can 3D print your own one. Under the VTX we can find an F4 flight controller with an integrated 6 ampere BLLES ESC. It comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.5.0 and it is using Omnibus F4 SD firmware. In order to configure it you will need to connect it to computer of course using a micro USB connector which is conveniently located on the bottom so you won't have any issues to access it, you just need to remove the batteries. And on the bottom since this is the FR Sky version we can find an FR Sky XM receiver. As for motors, the 65X is using the 0802 17500 kV motors. These motors are connected directly to the flight controller using a 3 pins connector which makes the replacement of a motor really easy and it won't require to do any soldering work. On top of the motors we can find 31mm props with a 1mm shaft hole. The weight of the 65X is 29.2 grams without the batteries and 44.5 grams including them. Just as a comparison, the weight of the Mobula 7, which is using a bigger frame, but besides that it has very similar specifications, is 27.8 grams, so it's interesting to find that it is actually lighter than the 65X. And the weight of the EOS 65, which is using a similar size frame, but this is a 1S swoop, is 21.8 grams, so of course it is much lighter. In order to bind the FR Sky version, you will need to power the 65X using the LiPo batteries while pressing the bind button on the XM receiver. Then the XM receiver is going to enter bind mode and on your transmitter, select mode D16, channels 1 to 16, hit bind, channels 1 to 8, telemetry on, and then you should be good to go. A nice feature of this FR Sky receiver is that it outputs the telemetry on auxiliary 12, so even though you're not going to get the RSI on your transmitter, you're going to get it on the OSD. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over the configuration of Betaflight and then test it both indoors and outdoors. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
that after testing the Beta 65X, I mostly enjoyed flying it outdoors and also inside playgrounds and for indoor flights I think that it is a little bit too heavy and powerful and unfortunately unlike the Mobula 7 it cannot be used with one S batteries so unless you are a really advanced pilot or you have a big house a better alternative would be to go with a US 65 for indoor flights or maybe the Mobula 7 which I have yet to test. On the other side, outdoors it performed quite well and I was impressed with the performance of the camera and the VTX. When the VTX was set to 200mV, I could get around 300 meters without any problems 
And I think that the problem is that the XM receiver is not that reliable. It doesn't have any diversity antenna. So I even got a failsafe when the quadcopter was only 20 meters away from me. So my advice is to always record the VR footage since if you're going to lose the quadcopter 300 meters away from you, it's going to be hard for you to find it, especially because it doesn't have any buzzer. And even if you're going to turn on the buzzers of the motors, which is advisable, it's still going to be hard for you to hear them. Another small advice I have for you is that you should avoid removing the canopy because it is pretty hard to put it back in place. I also lost one of the screws on one of the crash, so make sure that it is well secured because the little screw threads are pretty sneaky. In addition, the canopy can be broken pretty easily and a good way to fix it would be using this super UV glue. So you have to apply a little bit of glue and then just turn on the LED and it's going to fix it. And you can see that it fixed this crack here quite nicely. One more thing that you should do is to glue the VTX antenna to the back of the quadcopter using super glue. This is going to prevent the antenna from getting inside the propellers. And also make sure that after each crash, the propellers are well secured. Otherwise they might be detached in the middle of the flight, which will lead to a crash. If you do find that the propellers fall off too easily, what you can do in order to fix it is to put some super glue inside the propeller shaft and then put it back on the motor when the quadcopter is upside down and make sure that the super glue doesn't get in touch with the motors. Now as you can see the flight footage, the battery low warning was shown after less than 10 seconds of flight time and I think that it is advisable to set the battery low level warning to around 3.1 volts per cell However, you should be careful and don't over drain your batteries. This battery, for example, after less than 20 flights is a little bit puffed up and it is not going to perform as good as a new one. A possible fix for this issue would be also to replace the battery connector and I'm going to post a separate video where I'm going to change it to an XT30 connector and also use these two S Lipa batteries, which makes more sense than using two 1S single batteries. The problem is that when you're crashing, there is a good chance the battery is going to be disconnected and when two batteries are connected, it's going to increase the chance of the quadcopter shutting down since these batteries are connected in serial. I plan to publish the upgrade video in the next few days and after testing the Mobula 7 and the Emacs Steinhawk which should arrive tomorrow, I'm going to post another video which is going to compare between these quadcopters. I also hope to review the Beta 75X, which should be also a great outdoor flyer, but I don't think it's going to happen in the next two weeks. My last advice to you is that you should definitely turn on the crash over flip mode because it saved me a few times. And I'm going to wrap up this video with some crash footage where the flip over crash really helped me. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Beta 65X, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.